Hey there YouTube! You know what I haven't done in a donkey's age? I haven't done a ye old Transformers review. Which is surprising really, because I've been um, on something of a self-pitying spending spree uh, with regards to Transformers. There was a period, I think it was about a month ago, possibly a month ago, where I spent about £200 in one day on eBay on Transformers and got lots and lots of toys I've been wanting for a very long time. Also, as an aside, is that not the most hideous shirt you have ever, ever seen? Tasteless to the nth degree. I love it. It's vile. Um, anyway, now that we've got that important point made and out of the way, uh, the toy I'm going to be reviewing today is one I've wanted ever since I first saw its robot mode, which stands quite possibly, uh, arguably, as one of the very best robot modes in all of Transformerdom. Yes, you'll see what I mean when I get to it. It's a multi-mode transformer. Not only is it a multi-mode transformer, but it's a multi-mode transformer whose multiple modes are all unambiguously successful. Uh, an absolute rarity, I'm sure you'll agree. Not only is it a multiple-mode transformer whose multiple modes are entirely successful, it's also a Beast Wars Transformer. I know what some of you are thinking. Ah, uh, Beast Wars Transformer with multiple modes. One of them is bound to be one of those hideous half assed vehicle modes where it looks like the animal has tried to mate with some machinery and has gotten smushed in some sort of hideous car wreck. And for the most part, you would be right in that, but not with regards to this guy. Now, I had a bit, I'm having a bit of trouble reviewing this chat, because usually with this kind of Transformer, what I would do is start off with my least favourite mode and then work up to my most favourite. It's impossible with this guy. It's impossible because all of his modes are perfect. There's hardly... you can't really fault any of them. So I'm going to start with what is arguably his most controversial mode, and that is this. This chappy is Beast Wars 2 Galvatron. Um, and this mode is his drill tank mode, although I have heard it referred to by, by some much more colourful epithets. For example, um, I believe it was actually myself who, ref who described it as uh, Lilith's own serrated sex aid. Yeah. Um... Yes, Beast Wars 2 Galvatron. In terms of character, I don't know a great deal about him because I didn't watch the Beast Wars 2 cartoon and I have no intentions of doing so because it looks shit. He does, uh, he does occur in some of the expanded fiction. He does have a profile in the IDW comics um, uh, um, Beast Wars source book, which is a pile of shite. So... Um, you want to, might, might want to take that with a pinch of salt. Anyway, he is... Uh, generally, he's one of the Predacon generals. The Predacons operate under the authority of multiple generals who are themselves headed by the Tripredicus Council who used to be led by the original Predacon, Razorclaw, who was the founder of the Predacon movement after the Decepticons dissolved. This guy was one of the rogue generals, very much like Megatron, um, who else was there? Oh, Magmatron and Deathsaurus and uh, I believe Gigatron was one of them as well. And like Megatron, he has incredible delusions of grandeur. He is out for personal power above and beyond anything else. He's monstrously powerful. Next to Psychotic, unlike Beast Wars Megatron, Beast Wars Galvatron will charge right into the fray. And um, it usually takes a lot to stop him. This guy is a, a juggernaut, an unstoppable juggernaut of barely contained fury and power. He's very, very, very difficult to stop. It usually involves the Maximals doing something like... Um, shooting out a ledge underneath it so he falls into lava or something like that. And he usually survives that. So, yeah, very, very difficult to destroy. The only One of the principal differences between him and Beast Wars Megatron is that he apparently gives a shit about his underlings. He actually cares quite a lot for his followers and shows them a, a, a fair deal of respect. 
There you go. That's about as much as I know about him in terms of character. I like him quite a lot, actually, but it's really the toy beyond the character that sells me with this one. Just look at it. Look at that colour scheme. Yeah, it's pink, it's big, it's pink, it's black, it's gold. It very, very much resembles something you would find in a back alley store somewhere in Prague or somewhere to that effect. Um... This, the drill bit, I know that looks suspiciously like gold plastic, does it not? But it's actually not the kind of gold plastic that frays and fractures and breaks and dissolves into little bits. It's actually quite sturdy. And yes, although arguably you can definitely you can see bits of alternate modes, I mean that is obviously the tail from the, uh, the dragon mode, yes. It's not only a Beast Wars multiple mode transformer it's a beast wars multiple mode transformer whose multiple modes are entirely successful that also transforms into a dragon so it's a dragon former just to add to its already overwhelming appeal yes that is its vehicle mode drill tank mode he's got just lovely little bits of detail all over him the sculpt is very detailed all over. There's, there are bits of sculpted details everywhere, mechanical and biological. He also has things like little weapon ports, like these Gatling guns here. That's just a lovely, lovely touch. And the drill bit itself, I mean, there, there aren't many drill transformers out there, but I can, you can, there are enough to make a comparison between, and this is by and large the best drill bit out there. It's got so many little details all over, and also it's got that gimmick. It revolves which is lovely. I would go so far as to say that this is probably the most successful Beast Wars um, vehicle mode outside of the likes of Transmetal Waspinator and Transmetal Rampage, whose tank mode is fucking spectacular. So yes, Beast Wars uh, 2 Galvatron in his very big, very phallic, very pink drill tank mode. Right, on to his dragon mode. Now, take a look at that. God, I love dragon formers. There are, again, they're very rare. This guy is a rarity in every which way you look at him. Uh, bizarre, unusual vehicle mode. Bizarre, unusual dragon mode. It's very, very much a sort of Japanese-style dragon. It feels almost like... You could definitely picture this thing rampaging through the ruins of Tokyo fighting Godzilla or something like that. It looks like it's styled after one of the uh, the Godzilla monsters. I don't know the names of them, but it definitely reminds me of one or two of them. It's absolutely glorious. I love it. Even these things, I mean, these are obviously the halves of the, the drill bit, but they come off looking like, I don't know, shields or extra wings or something to that effect. And look, look at this. Look at the, uh, every, every joint in this neck is articulated. I love that. If you're going to make a dragon former, it needs to have a, a neck articulated like that. It has this gorgeous claw tail, and those claws will fire, by the way. It's not flexible, unfortunately. It's completely rigid, unlike the tail of Cryotech or Transmetal 2 Megatron, to which this thing definitely bears comparison. I don't think the, uh, the dragon mode is quite as 100% successful as... Cryotex and Transmetal 2 Megatron, but then you're not going to find a Dragon Mode that's anywhere near as successful. It is phenomenally gorgeous. And besides which, unlike Cryotech and Transmetal 2 Megatron, this guy has g three genuine modes that all genuinely work. It is absolutely stunning. Even the, all of this works, this sort of undercarriage stuff on his, his little weedy chicken legs. It all works. And look, he has Gatling guns in his knees. I, I just... Ah! Oh. That is monstrously cool, insofar as I'm concerned. I like the notion of any Transformer having Gatling guns in its knees.
I also love the Dragon Mode wings. They are these bizarre, serrated, strangely shaped affairs that look like they will rip to ribbons whatever he flies towards. Yes, that is an absolutely stunning dragon former. I love it. I love its absurdity and its strangeness and its very, very um, anime mecha Godzilla feel. It's very distinct from all of the other dragon formers in Transformers. The only one it kind of resembles is Gigatron's double-headed dragon mode, which is similarly Japanese. Yes, that is an, I think, unambiguously successful dragon mode. But even the dragon mode pales in comparison to the robot mode. Yeah. I almost don't feel inclined to say anything at all. I think the robot mode speaks for itself in terms of just how fantastic it actually is. It's got this really strange aesthetic going on for a Transformer. It feels like it almost has like a Persian or Arabic Emperor vibe, but with all of the, the opulent colours, the jewel in its chest, these flowing shapes throughout. And it even has the almost sort of like um, Imperial Slippers thing going on there. It is absolutely beautiful. And of course, this guy, one of this guy's monikers uh, that he uses in the show is the, the Grand Emperor of Destruction or something to that effect. And he definitely, definitely looks like that here. Again, he has Gatling guns in the kneecaps. He is armed with these scythes, these serrated scythes in either hand. He has these things coming off of his back. This thing actually detaches and becomes a handheld weapon, but that looks shite. It looks much better on his back like this. This guy... It doesn't. This guy doesn't need to transform. If this were an action figure, I would have picked this up because of how beautiful it looks. It even has like a little marble in the chest there. Look at that. This thing is gorgeous, and it's a crime. It's an absolute crime that this has not been released officially in the West. The only way to get this guy is online, you, or at one of the conventions. He's ve he's rather tricky to get a hold of. I was rather lucky in that I found him for sale for relatively cheap newly boxed. Yay! Got a bargain there. But the more, the more, it's one of those toys, the more I handle it, the more fantastic I think it is, the more I love it. It's definitely up there. This guy is definitely in my top ten. He is stupendously good. This robot mode, even given that, even given the kibble hanging off of its back, which is no detriment to it whatsoever, this thing stands as one of the most successful Transformers, aesthetically and mechanically, that has ever, ever been produced. And if you get the chance to pick him up, do so!